insane. Yeah, Maxwell. Okay, Francis. I, I think I think I'm I'm satisfied. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Hello, Francis. Thank you so much for this session. I think it's been very very good. We we, we have learned a lot. Me personally, uh, I've been talking to quite a, a number of things. Um, but Francis, let me let let's get into this conversation. You know, um, from the video that you showed. Yeah. It, it shows that in the foreign market, the, the uh, stock market really says something about the economy. Yes, it does. Uh, but um, looking at ours, it, it's a bit far from that. What do you think the GSC can do to ensure that we get a lot of companies less on our market? Well, I think you can said it. Well, yes, for, for, the, for, the, <clears throat> for the stock, exchange to mimic exactly how the economy reacts. Uh, yes, we need a lot of companies on board. I mean, take a look at S&P 500. It has five, I mean, take a look at um, these um, markets in advanced countries. There are so many, there are over a thousand companies listed on the, on the, a lot of them. Now the market capitalization is so huge. But here, like I said, we just have, what, 41, 43 companies listed. And definitely that is not a true representation of the economy. So I think that, um, yes, we all agree that we need a lot of companies on board, but there should be, you can look at it in two ways, okay? I believe, I strongly believe that the stock, the Ghana Stock Exchange is doing something, okay? They're, they're making a move to get companies to, get listed, okay? I think they are open. I don't think they have rigid, I do not think they have rigid um, systems in place. The thing about it is also the companies itself, okay? The companies are not allowing themselves to get onto the board, onto the market. Now, when you ask this question, they tell you um, it's because um, the, the system is this, the system is that. But I think if you look at the Western countries, okay, once a company is set up, the founder of that company is in a hurry, like it's can't wait to get listed on the, on, on, on the stock market. That's why you have a company set up and two, three years, boom, it's gone big because they've raised money, it's listed on a stock. But in Ghana here, someone, someone um, creates a company and that person wants the company for himself and the family alone. They don't want to open up, okay? So I think you, you can put the blame on the doorstep of the owners of the companies in this country, one. And also, yes, I think, well, you may be forced to, you, you can't put the entire blame on them. You may be forced to say that, yes, the, the Ghana Stock Exchange will also have to do more in terms of education. Okay, for all you know, they are not educated enough. Their awareness hasn't gotten to where it's supposed to get to. And so, but what I know is that the Security and Industry Commission and GIC, they are trying. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing their best to get these companies to understand the benefits of coming onto the stock um, exchange or the market. So I think education is the thing, it's key. There should be a lot of education to educate these companies, these um, business owners who are setting up businesses. And uh, maybe also, well, not maybe, for sure, um, the, there's a need to identify the impediments, okay? The hurdles that it's avoiding, preventing these companies to come on board. Stage one, I think, I think GSC by now should even be sitting down with company owners and having discussions and getting to understand their mindset and telling them what it is and benefits why they should come onto the market. And I think I think we'll be fine. I think as, as brokers, both you and I and others, I think it is also uh, in our, it's also in our right to sort of do a lot of these, um, you know, 
meetings and discussions so that people would sort of be able to appreciate the reason why um, they need to they need to pay attention to the stock market. Because like I said, I mean when you go to America, when a when a young guy creates or sets up a company, I'm telling you, the goal is to get listed on the stock market. That is the goal. Yeah, sure. That is the goal. I mean, yeah. but here in Ghana, <laughs> it is the opposite. So I think it's an innate thing, and uh, although it is, but I think with more education, we will be able to um, break that, um, you know, ice. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank yeah. you, Francis. But uh, I would like to invite comments from all of us here. So um, if you are ready to comment, I mean, what, what, what do you think can be done to attract companies on the market? Is it that, who, who is to blame for this? Was looking at the way the market is, it doesn't look too good comparing to what our contemporaries are doing in Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and so on. And when you talk about the stock market, it says something about the coming, but ours, nothing, nothing really. So if you have any comments, you can, Maxwell. Yeah, yes, yes, if you have a comment, um, please, um, on this very topic, which I have a keen interest in, uh, I think Francis put it quite so um, aptly. He said that the blame is to be laid on the doorstep, perhaps not just on um, government, but individuals and how the corporate understanding of um, a business should be. Uh, primarily, I think this part of the world, or maybe let's just say Ghana, because you find that there are regional companies. There are companies that originate from, let's say, Northern Africa that have an expansionist kind of uh, goal that they think regionally as versus, and even though they are family businesses, when you look at their origin, they think regionally. And even when you go to Middle East, you see a lot of these merchant businesses from, let's say, Lebanon and the likes come to Africa and they thrive so well because they have an understanding of how to utilize debt to be able to expand businesses. And that education is lost on us. And it's, I, I think the Fine, it's an educational thing, but maybe it's also a socio-economic thing and how we are conducted. Because people sort of see debt or the idea of utilizing debt or raising capital, they, they can't establish the link. And education doesn't help that case any better because you realize that... Hello, Max, you muted yourself. Let's talk about these things, how setting up a company it is important to understand that raising capital is key. And it, if you don't have capital as, uh, let's say, um, someone who start, who's putting together a startup, we don't talk about that one. We talk about the fact that a one man all the actions available to you to be able to get Felix, if you are listening to us, only mute your, your audio. Yeah, Please can you hear me. We can hear you now. Yes, yeah, so I think I think that gap in education and when you marry that with this uh, the culture of that fierce debt or borrowing, it it forms this whole you know matrix of. Ghanaians or let's say Africans. In fact, let me just say Ghanaians so that I don't prejudice anybody. Ghanaians are a bit fearful of the idea of expanding business. And they think that when shareholders or interest in the company goes beyond them, it might, might deal a blow to their bottom line. As versus when you see, I, I watch a lot of documentaries coming from let's say, the Western parts of the world where they, they even teach kids that you think about raising capital from venture capitalists and all those things. So you find that even in Nigeria, which has a booming fintech industry, they are having Series C funding and all that thing, where people who have ideas meet people who have money. But in Ghana, everyone is trying to put together a family business and let it stay in the family. They think that if they have shareholders or a board, it means that their company is not theirs. And you know that sense of extreme ownership, which we have, we have, we, we, we want to we imbibe. It's not, it's not very helpful. So yes, there are capital markets. There are means to raise money. We should understand that. And we should, we should start educating people to think in that light. That that will set us on our road to, you know, maximizing ideas and companies and returns generally. Thank you, so that's thank, what you. thank you, Maxwell. Um, before Lawrence comes in, um, Manuel says the government can play 
uh, is it a role? It could it could list most state owned companies. I think that's also a good point. And um, he also comes back to say government can aid in this by listing most state owned enterprises. This was a, a time. I think there was a time. One of the directors of the exchange was commending this because it could raise so much back, uh, back up higher. Oh, very Accountability and generally changing losses and SOV profitabilities. Yes, so he is of, he's of the view that government has a big role to play in this. Lawrence, can you step in? Okay, so my was uh, the worry about the companies not be not allowing themselves to be listed on the stock exchange. And um, I wanted to ask so finally, if like, the government can do something and be like, you your service is really made in the in, in the how do you call it the country so go like like a first four thing go to the stock market go and get fun um, and then produce what you are producing because the state really needs it or blah 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 can be done to you i want to know if there is something like that so that i don't know and um, can you come again just come again with the, with the okay let's see company is production of okay the government realized that the government is not the government your line is i don't know whether it's from my end but uh, uh, the line is we are always getting hello Lawrence please go ahead hello Lawrence can you hear me now yeah you can hear you can you go ahead so if you can hear me position yourself, it will be very grateful. Eric, if you're ready, kindly come in. Yeah, um, um so I, I want to add to what um what the submission they've been so far, and what I can also say is that I think it's all. A lot of companies are not listed because of the perception of big earnings. You see, mostly these one man businesses, um, I don't know, but it seems they always tend to be competent with what they have. They start their business, they get some income, and they think it's okay. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eric. They just want to maintain the autonomy. They want to be their own, but they just want to be the sole owner of the company. And these people don't, I hope you can hear me. Yes, you can hear me, go ahead. Yeah, and it's like this one-man business, I don't know, because where I used to work like this, it was a one-man business. And the way things were being done, I didn't see the, I didn't, I didn't see there was a future for growth, you see. So I think it all depends on our perception, the way we think and the way we are brought up as Ghanaians. We tend to be competent with the small we get. We don't think big. We don't, we don't look into the future and see ourselves becoming more than we are now. And I think it's so the training should begin from our infancy. You see, we should get this kind of thinking that we can do more. We can do even more than what the, these white folks are doing. It's just that we limit ourselves. We always think we, we, what we have is enough. So that's the small that I can add. It's just how we are being trained. If we can get the training right from infancy, like what my guy was saying that there's this, um, um, these foreign countries have started training their, their case on how these venture capital things can work. If we get the training from the onset, I think we'll grow up with it. And when we are able to venture into our own businesses, we will we'll, we'll always try to make it big and, and venture into getting listed in the, on the stock exchange to expand our services. No. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think, I think, yeah. okay, yeah. no, Kofi, I just want to add on. Okay, to okay, okay. Eric. Right. Eric is right. I think um, I agree 100% with what he's just said. I think that's what I was trying to say. Um, it goes to tell you reason why we do not, as Ghanaians, we do not have uh, com companies. Um, you know, moving into other, um, moving out of the shores of Ghana to other countries, okay? We always have multinationals coming here, but if we are to even between 
you and I, if we are to list about five Ghanaian companies, or maybe even three Ghanaian companies that's outside of Ghana in the US, that's gone, gone really big. I don't think I, on top of my, I don't even, I don't know one. I don't know, maybe I stand to be corrected anyways, but there is this innate thing, there's this mindset. And that's why I'm saying that you cannot blame the, the regulators like the GSC, you cannot blame them a hundred percent. I will put some of the blame on the doorstep of the owners of the companies. They need to have an, um, reorient them, you know, thinking about what business is all about. Okay, and um, yes, the GSC will also have to do more than what they are actually doing. Okay, okay. so yeah, I think Eric is right on that one. Thank you, thank you, uh, Francis. Um, Kobe is asking a question here. I think I'll just go after that. I don't know if it's been answered or not, but what's the minimum recommended or recommended amount of money you need to start an investment with? You can do as little as you have. Um, there's no minimum <clears> number you can buy. So far as MTN is trading at one city, 11 pesos, you can do five, 10 pesos, five, 10 shares, and so on. But you know, the more you invest, the more you get. All right, so you take note of that before you come in. All right, so just for the information, the GSC returned about 42% last year. All right, as yeah. against yeah. Treasury bills, yeah. doing, yeah. bills doing 13%. 91 yeah, day, 182 uh, day, and uh, one year having a uh, 16%. So this yeah. is to tell you that the GSC, there is a lot to make on the GSC, all right? It, yeah. we, it's just yeah. that we have to pay attention and um, you pay attention and uh, just put in your money at the right times. And I'm sure if you're very tactful, you contact the right broker, because it's always available. I don't know whether I should share your number, your number with, with my guys, if you have a different number with us, I mean, however you want us, you can even put your email on the platform so that they can contact you anytime. You know, um, these are people who are very uh, aggressive in, in their pursuits. So they, they need to be guided, I think. And, uh, this, this is some of the things we are doing to help them so that they can uh, enter the market properly. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I think um, we can end here. If you have any further questions, you can send them to us on the platform. Okay, so Francis's uh, email has been put on the platform. You can put it up and contact him. Right, it's Gmail. It's Gmail f for group 1987 at gmail.com. And the official email address f for group at umbcapital.com. We are so much grateful to you, Francis Ogro. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, okay. thank you to everybody as well. Uh, we, we are arranging for another session and that will be on the analysis, on the analyst point of view. On, on this platform, we had the analyst here and he joined us, I think he's still online. And uh, he, he will have to schedule a date, we'll let you know, All right? And uh, we also had the chief trader at Strategic African Securities. He was online, yes. I think he's still online. Me, if, if you can hear me, just say hello to us. All right. Okay. So, um, Ni, Ni was also online, and uh, both Ni and Francis, they were supposed to be part of the judges for the stock pitch competition 2021, but last minute it did not allow them. So, um, going forward, we'll have them having some sessions with us. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. So, we end here. Bye bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>